DM1362 Professional Series Disc Mower. We will, start, we will start from the very beginning by uncrating the disc mower and setting it up all the way through completion. As you can see over here, we've already uncrated the mower. Right now, we've got the cutter bar sitting on the shipping crate and we have the belt drive tongue laid back already. As you can see over here, we have all of the parts laid out on the floor and ready to assemble step by step. As you can see, we've got the tongue laid down on a stack of blocks so that the tongue is sitting almost even with the cutter bar. The next step after this is to install the backbone, or the frame, if you will, of the mower. As you can see here, we have the backbone suspended with a hoist. We will lift this up, set it down, and bolt it onto the mower. As you can see, we're in the process of bolting the backbone onto the gearbox. As you can see, this bolt needs to be installed into the backbone the first thing you do before you begin mating the two together, or else you run into a clearance issue with this little bracket. I'm now installing the bolts that bolt the backbone to the gearbox. I'll be torquing these to a foot-pounds torque of about 81 pounds. All right, we're going to tighten down the uh, rear mainframe to the back of the cutter bar here. You've got four bolts here with nuts on the bottom. Uh, they are uh, nylon lo uh, locking nuts. Uh, the torque spec from the assembly instruction says 83 newton meters, which in American torque uh, foot pounds is around uh, but about 61 foot pounds. So we're going to go ahead and just make sure that these are uh, all torqued properly. The next step is to hook up the breather hose. The breather runs through the backbone of the main frame and breathes on the other end. That way, when the mower is standing up straight at a 90 degree angle, it'll still be able to relieve any pressure that's built up inside of the cutter bar. Simply remove these red plastic caps and screw it down tight. The next step is to remove this main pivot pin here. So we're going to take this 19 millimeter bolt out. And then just pull the pin out. Right now, I'm preparing the three point headstock to bolt onto the tongue. The pin that Toby just showed you how to remove will slip through this opening right here. This is what bolts the two together and allows the headstock to pivot. All right, as you can see, uh, we've basically got the uh, three-point hitch mounted here on the DM1362 now. Uh, this portion of the assembly of this mower is for sure a two-man job. Um, definitely, we've got the engine hoist here. Uh, the biggest thing is when you rig the three-point hitch, it's best uh, to make sure that you rig it on the right-hand side on this side uh, of your loop up top because what that'll do is when you pick it up, it actually will uh, take the, the assembly and almost put it downhill just a little bit, which helps trying to line it up here. Um, as you are starting to, to bring the hitch in, it's important to, to line up this pin into the casting first um, and make sure that your shield, uh, there's a big hole that that pin goes through and you line those two things up and then you sort of work the hitch into place uh, where your, your next pin goes if you can see it right through here, okay? Um, and then as we get finished here, this pin will actually slide up through the bottom um, into that hole that we just positioned there. Um, certainly uh, the best, probably the tool in your toolbox for this is a long-handled pry bar uh, to be able to line those pin holes up um, so that whenever you go to put this in, it's gonna be easy. Okay, at this point, it's time to hook up the breakaway arm. In our last step, we installed the main pivot pin for the hitch stock. After installing that pin, latch on to the hitch with the hoist right here. Lift this side of the hitch up so there's plenty of clearance for it to slide over the back side of the stand bar. This allows the hitch to pivot backwards enough that you can successfully hook up the breakaway bar. 
If not, you won't have enough play in the, in the breakaway arm to come out and, and latch on the ball. So as you can see, we've got the breakaway bar tightened up. The breakaway bar spring length needs to be set at about 4.8 inches. What this does is if the cutter bar hits an immovable object, such as a stump or a big rock, the cutter bar will break away backwards right here and pivot backwards. So then all you would have to do to reset it, simply reverse the tractor straight back, allow the cutter bar to pivot, and this will relatch and that'll reset your breakaway. This prevents major damage uh, for the cutter bar and the cutter bar frame. All right, so before we begin the, the spring installation for the uh, cutter bar, we want to make sure that we fold the parking stand up. Getting the parking stand up and out of the way will alleviate some pressure and will help us to hook up the rest of the spring tension and the helper spring at a later time. Uh, to attach the bracket that holds the, uh, the springs on, we have to torque these bolts uh, to 302 foot-pounds uh, because there is hydraulics on it. So we're going to go ahead and just check that here right now. Uh, so these are your two uh, springs and on the 12 foot machine because it is as heavy as it is uh, We do use the two springs here A um, couple of assembly tips here um, When you go to hook these springs up the easiest thing to do is to take this this complete assembly loose um, and then put your springs in to these two here come up from the bottom. So you'll put your springs in up from the bottom and then kind of lay this bracket over it and then back over the top to hook these two up um, is the easiest thing to do. And then you take this whole assembly and set it down into this saddle and your assembly will be laying down kind of this way, pointing toward the ground. At that point, um, what you'll want to have done uh, previously is this is your helper spring here um, so you'll want to have uh, already installed your helper spring ahead of uh, all of uh, your your weight springs here so if you'll come around on this side you can actually see uh, that there is a washer and then you have your bracket and then there's a washer you have your spacer bushing okay and then there's one large roll pin that holds this bracket for your springs. You have a, uh, another washer here to protect your outside roll pin. So uh, when you're assembling all of this, just make sure that you put your helper spring on first and then everything from the outside. Uh, when you're installing the spring assembly here, it is important to note uh, that when the hitch is, is all the way laid over, um, for this portion of the, of the assembly, um, the, bump, the rubber bump stop that mounts on the end of the frame here is removed, um, and that gives us a, a, a solid stop here, number one, for, for the weight of the, of the hitch for, from a safety aspect, but also uh, with the bump stop removed here, you have plenty of clearance to hook up your springs. With that bump stop in, you would never be able to install these springs here on this pin. At this point, it's safe to hook up the hydraulic lines. As you can see, Toby's already installed a hydraulic line that comes off the helper spring cylinder. This line right here comes back to our main lift cylinder, and then the line that comes loose in the kit bolts up to here and is the one that hooks to the remote of the tractor, your lift line uh, straight to the remote. Alright, so before we assemble this, I, I really want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the drive guard protection uh, that's in this cutter bar. Uh, as you can see here, this is our drive guard disc. Uh, so if you look here at this point, here, here, and here, we have shear protection. If the end of this cutter bar were to hit a solid object and stop this turtle or this cutter module from, uh, from turning, it would actually shear this disc at this point. So this module mounts on the bottom side here, and we'll show you in just a little while how this goes together. But this module rides up underneath here, and if it stops, this disc shears and protects the rest of the cutter bar. All right, so I've installed the drive guard disc. Uh, 
and this outside cutter bar module. And now I'm gonna to go to torque down all uh, of your drive bolts as well as your drive guard bolts as well. Um, come, come standard with the 13, all DM series mowers, but specifically this 1362 um, is this plastic stopper. And uh, what this plastic stopper is designed to do is to fit down inside of this hole here for whenever you go to change knives on the cutter bar, or in this case, we're gonna torque down um, all of our drive guard uh, disc bolts as well as the drive bolt. So we wanna use that to stop the cutter bar from turning. So I've got my torque wrench here set uh, to the proper torque spec, which is 110 Newton meters or 81 foot pounds of torque. Um, and that is the same torque spec that will be used on all, uh, on all bolts inside of the cutter bar. So all of the drive guard disc bolts, uh, as well as the actual uh, six drive bolts that drive the cutter, mar the cutter module. We just finished installing both hats on the outside cutting disc. I've already installed the swath disc you want to make sure when you install the swath disc that it's lined up directly with the point on top of the hat. This is adjustable, so it'll be a, a setting you'll have to make out in the field the first time you run this to adjust your, your swath width after the crop is cut. As you can see, we've installed the end bracing for the outer curtain. Four bolts, bolt straight through the frame and bolt the end curtain support frame on tight. The next thing we did is bolt on this crop divider. There's a measurement provided in the assembly instructions, seven inches from the outside frame to the inner piece of the top brace. This acts as a crop divider and splits the crop as you're coming through and, and back around the other side again. The next thing, we need to insert the bump stop straight in this threaded hole right here and screw it down tight and you also have to insert a grease cert right here at this pivot point. A grease cert is not provided with the assembly contents, so one will need to be sourced locally. As you can see, we have the curtain frames laid out, ready to bolt on. They will bolt on to these welded brackets right here. On each side, the curtains fold up on the front and back side to allow serviceability to both sides of the cutter bar. The bracket with the downward lip frame on front points to the front of the machine. All right, so as you can see, uh, we have now installed uh, all of the curtain supports. Uh, the curtain supports also act as a, as a safety shield so nobody can walk into the cutter bar uh, with the machine running. Um, just a couple of, uh, of tips and tricks for installing these curtains. Um, I usually recommend at least two, if not three, uh, lineup bars. The lineup bars help you, um, A, you know, you can run these lineup bars in like this uh, whenever you're going to put the bolts uh, and the nuts in. The other thing uh, that I would, I, I would uh, make sure that you know is that one washer goes on the outside and one washer goes on the inside. Uh, then you have a nut and then a lock nut uh, on, and on the outside. Of course, these two, or this uh, jam nut does not need to be uh, extremely tight as you got a lock nut on the outside. You wanna make sure um, that, that, is, that that is loose enough that you can lift the curtain. Um, but the whole point here is when you go to hang these, uh, these up, if you have another person helping you, you can certainly uh, put your uh, lady finger or your, uh, your lineup bar in to help you line this all up at one time. It's much easier to do if you do that along the way. It takes no time, uh, otherwise you're, you're trying to uh, get this thing lined up and it's, it's much more difficult. So certainly a uh, tip to use your, your lineup bars. Another point is just make sure that your, your nuts uh, and your bolts are on the top hole, otherwise your curtain will never pivot. But with the shield that's provided with the kit, it installs 
on the back side of the mower. Up here you have a bracket that a carriage bolt pokes down through the top side. And down here, we'll have to remove one of the bolts that bolts the cutter bar to the back frame and then one of the bolts that bolts the backbone to the gearbox. They'll have to be removed so that the shield will bolt up to these two holes right here. It's probably a better idea to install this shield at the same time you're installing the backbone to the gearbox. In the next step, we will mount the front shield. This bracket bolts up right here like this and provides support for the front shield that then bolts to these two holes on these welded brackets. All right, to complete the installation on the curtain, um, basically you've got four bolts that go across uh, that hold this, uh, this railing on all the way across on the front and the back. A couple things to note um, is that as you're, as you're pulling this uh, curtain over, whether it be this part or this part, uh, if you're lucky enough or fortunate enough for it to be warm outside, uh, my recommendation is to take uh, your curtain outside, lay it out nice and flat where it can get warm. It's much more uh, pliable and easier to stretch uh, at that point. But um, whenever you get ready to attach it, uh, you want to have another person on the other end holding uh, your <coughs> this railing. Uh, basically what happens is you put the 13 millimeter bolt and washer through this front side and there is a bracket on the back side of the curtain uh, here that your nylon lock, lock nut and washer attach to. So you push it through, um, through the metal railing and the curtain, and then on this side, uh, you attach it with your washer and lock nut, and that's also a 13 millimeter there. Uh, so you'll need a 13 millimeter either ratchet or in this case uh, electric impact and a 13 millimeter uh, wrench all the way across uh, all the way across the front side. Uh, now moving around to the back. Okay, as we move around to the back here, uh, we see the exact same uh, bracket or brace uh, as we have on the front side. Of course, we have four bolts running all the way across. Uh, of the the railing as well uh, one thing to point out of course these are the same size 13 millimeter all the way across uh, the only difference is on the back side here um, we have uh, just a one thing that's different and uh, these braces uh, go through a pocket on the back side of the curtain here and help to hold the curtain down on this left hand side uh, if you can see that they actually uh, will go on before the washer and lock nut um, on the second to the last hole. And then of course, if you notice here, on the very end, we actually have our North American implement lights. Our stop and turn signal uh, needs to be installed on the very end. And then of course you have all your wire loom and everything that needs to be run up to the tractor. One thing to point out, on this end, of course you have your brace that holds the curtain down, but you also have to put your implement light on as well. It, it utilizes that same hole in mounting hardware. Uh, your wire loom then is run up toward the front of the tractor and on around and you actually have uh, this uh, bracket here that will hold this wire loom down and we tighten that up and then send the loom on up to the, uh, up to the tractor. As you can see, we're in the final steps of assembly for this DM1362. One of the last steps is tying on the release rope. The release rope will run up into the cab and act as the mechanism for releasing the safety. Simply run the rope through this small hole on top of the hitch and then tie a nice knot to this bracket. As you can see, the T-handle doubles as a stop to remove the blades. It stops the turtles from spinning when you're removing the blades. Simply undo the knot and pull the mechanism off and you can drop it in the hole and use it as a stop. One of the last steps of assembly is greasing all of the zerks on the mower. Make sure you follow the recommended amount of grease per the operator's manual and grease accordingly during your mowing, mowing operation according to the operator's manual intervals. 
The last step is installing the PTO shaft. The PTO shafts come from the factory long so that you can adapt the shaft to any tractor. Once the mower is mounted onto the tractor, you'll have to measure the PTO shaft from the stub of the shaft on the mower to the PTO shaft on the tractor, subtract accordingly so the shaft will slide back far enough that you can hook and unhook it, cut it down to length, and then reinstall it, and you're good to go. As you can see, we finished the assembly of the DM1362. After assembly, make sure you hook the mower up to the tractor and run it up and down to purge the air out of the hydraulic cylinders and to check for any hydraulic oil leaks. And the very last thing, make sure uh, you take it out into an open area, a safe area. You can lay the mower down to the ground and start it, run it all the way up to high idle. Make sure that uh, everything is, uh, is good and tight there and uh, you can let the, the cutter bar oil heat up a little bit um, and go ahead and shut her down and you should be ready to go. We appreciate your time today watching this video and uh, appreciate your business. Thank you. See you next time.